Tesla shares dropping yesterday, now down more than 30 percent for the year. That comes after a drop in first quarter deliveries disappointed the street. It is the first decline since the year 2020. Joining us right now to talk about Tesla and the broader markets is Sylvia Jablonski, Defiance ETF's CEO. And, and Sylvia, what do you think? That, that drop in the first quarter came as a surprise because it's the first time we've seen that since 2020. Yeah, and I think that this is the first time where they have a whole lot of headwinds facing them. So I think that, you know, EV demand has just shrunk. There are fewer people interested in buying these cars, particularly with rates as high as they are. Mm -hmm. And then the company itself has had issues. You know, they had a fire. They have lawsuits. Um, they've had, you know, a, a, a stain to their brand, I think, at this point. And just in general, just the popularity of EVs has slowed down in the near term. I don't think that this is necessarily bad for the longer term, but for the next six to nine months, you know, as a test. A shareholder, you might not be super thrilled with where the price is going to go. Part of the concern also has been competition coming in from China, yes. uh, BYD. Is that a threat in this market? I mean, it's a threat they're going to face in China, but is it one that they, you think they eventually face here or not? I don't think it's a threat that they're going to face here for a long time, but China matters a whole lot to Tesla. You know, it's the world's second largest economy. Tesla has had a strong foothold there, and I think that they're going to lose some of their presence there because of BYD. But I think, you know, if we kind of take a step back in terms of Tesla, where the future might be bright for them might be in the AI world. You know, the self-driving vehicles, the robo-taxis, if they ever kind of accomplish that, they could potentially Get, generate some revenue streams. And also Tesla has cash, so they've been able to cut the prices of their cars. They've been able to better their margins, improve their supply chains and things like this. So I think that, you know, if you kind of stick it out for the long term and you believe that electric vehicles can grow a little bit more, Tesla will probably remain a, a winner in this space. It, it's kind of interesting because that's a theme I'm thinking of for the entire market. Does AI overwhelm or it, can it outshine some of the concerns people have just about if the Fed's not going to cut rates? Yeah, I mean, I, I think there are going to be AI winners and losers, companies like Microsoft and Amazon and Google that do a whole lot of other things and are also going to participate in AI will continue to benefit from that, whether, whether or not there's kind of churn in that theme. But companies like Apple and Tesla that are a little more consumer driven may suffer in the near term on that. But, you know, I do think that AI is, is largely, you know, the, the largest tech innovation opportunity that we have as investors for the next five to 10 years, without a doubt. We, we are talking about concerns in the market, the potential for a pullback, but we're still only about one and a half percent from yeah. from record highs. Yeah, I, I think the panic is a little bit overdone yeah. as usual. <laughs> and I think investors are sometimes their own worst enemies. You know, the market falls back a little bit and it's like sell, sell, sell. It starts, you know, driving up and we're, we're buying too high. I just think that, you know, these are the times where it takes discipline. I think it's totally fine, again, for the markets to churn. The economy is strong. The data that's coming out tells us that, you know, we are in the soft landing. What will disrupt it? It's hard to see in the near term. So it's it's sort of like stay the course and buy on the pullbacks. We, you know, we have kept saying that for the last Would you year. Even so consider this a pullback? I mean, one and not, a half percent. Not, you know what? Months. Not really. But if I have FOMO on a couple of stocks like AMD and NVIDIA, not major pullbacks. But, you know, I like to get in at lower prices. And, and you know, I've right, seen that just... 900 plus. <laughs> Right. Yeah. You gotta buy something, well, right? Used to say at least a pullback of five to ten percent. We're not yeah. talking about that. We're not talking about that. But I do think that you know, again, like there, there are so many, um, there's so much opportunity and so much big themes in AI right now that everybody kind of wants to buy those stocks. So if you look at the ETFs that track those themes, if you look at the single stocks mm -hmm. and you buy a couple percentage points back, it's you know kind of better than buying at the all-time highs. I just think that dollar cost averaging is the way to go, particularly in some of these themes. Um, to your point, it's not a big pullback. I think we can pull back a little bit more. The market kind of ran up pretty quickly since November. Rates are higher than ever. Oil is spiking a little bit. We have to ride this out. Um, areas outside of AI that you're watching at this point? Yeah, so I'm, I mean, I'm pretty tech happy, <laughs> let's call it. So I think the next AI for me is quantum computing. So I'm starting to look at those stocks, you know, whether it's stocks like Rigetti or Form Factor, IonQ, even companies like IBM and, and Amazon that are just investing in that space there. Um, you're starting to see some growth. You're starting to see some investment, whether it's from the U.S. government or China. Um, you know, I, I think that that's going to be kind of the, the next chat GPT moment is going to come around quantum computing. I also like healthcare. These weight loss drugs are obviously taking off and we have that larger than ever baby booming population that's that's aging and going to consume services. A lot of these companies like Lilly and Novo have other drugs. So do you that worry that any of those stocks are at risk? I mean, they've had 
huge demand for the weight loss drugs, but there's also a pretty big political push to bring yeah. prices down for those drugs. You, you hear it from areas in the Senate. Uh, Bernie Sanders, I think, just calling for that in the last week or so. You've also got Medicare and Medicaid saying, we may not pay for some of these things, or the government say, may say, we want to renegotiate based on what we've already passed. Uh, with the laws to renegotiate some of these prices. Yeah, I think that's a fair point. And, and a lot of these stocks have been sleepers for a couple of years, but I think that they have enough demand in the weight loss drugs that even if they have to cut costs, they're going to generate enormous amounts of revenue from this, provided that nobody gets sick and we don't find out that there's, you know, serious side effects. That it's that the next fin fin. Yeah, right, exactly. Um, but on the other hand, they also have a lot of growth in cancer drugs and metabolic disease drugs, diabetes, things like this. So I just think the overall, and AI feeds into that too, right? AI is starting to help these companies discover more precise and effective drugs. So I, I do think that there's some runway there.